Today I want to talk about why electric vehicles are a scam for the most part, but I still love my Tesla. I have an electric vehicle, I have a Tesla, it's a Tesla Model X 100D and when I bought this car about four years ago, I was in a very different situation. I was traveling a lot for work because I was touring around North America making videos with great farmers that if you remember from the field.tv you've seen and I was traveling with my family and so we wanted to be comfortable and um, it was also really cheap to travel because electricity is cheaper than gasoline for the most part. And uh, on average, this car is about a fifth of the cost of gasoline if I'm paying for that electricity. But we're off grid now. And so the sun charges this car for probably 95% of its kilometers used because I mostly am driving around in my local area. So I'm about 25, 30 minutes outside of a town, a little town. And uh, when I drive to and fro, from there, the sun charges this car, so it's it's free. It's also a very comfortable car. I like it. I like the features. Um, yes, it's a little high tech, which I'm not that big of a fan on. Yes, it could technically drive me to the Gulag, but pretty much all new vehicles, whether gas or electric, can do that now anyways, so it's not really um, a thing that's exclusive to Tesla or electric vehicles. So I like, I like this car, and again, it makes sense for me because it's free to drive, because the sun charges our car, and because our off-grid system is as big as it is, for eight months of the year, we have a problem where we have so much excess electricity that we produce, and all of that excess goes into this vehicle, and uh, the rest of it goes to pumping water and doing various things that you've seen my videos. I've, talked about these things many times but the reason electric vehicles are a scam for most people and will not actually um, work for society in general especially the middle class there's a number of reasons for this so the first one is most people can't afford electric vehicles electric vehicles on average probably cost about 25 percent more than uh, the gas-powered equivalent, so size, uh, features, things like that. And that's a starting point. I would say for a mid-level, lower-level electric vehicle, it's gonna be uh, about that, and then when you get into a vehicle like this, it's probably 50% more than a vehicle of its equivalent in size and features and whatnot. Um, so cost is one. Um, number two is context. Most people, most middle class people don't have a the context in order to have this vehicle in that you are going to, um, you need to have a place to charge it for one. A lot of people don't. They don't have a, a single car garage or a place. Even a lot of people who live in a house, their parking is on the street. So where do you charge it? That means you're going to be depending on charging stations, which is inconvenient because you got to sit there and charge um, and you got to go out of your way to do it. So it doesn't make sense there. Uh, number three is if you live in a cold climate, um, if you don't keep your car warm, you're going to lose charge. So even if you have an open garage and you're plugging your car in at nighttime, which is what you have to do if you're going to, if you're going to park it where it's cold, you're consuming power you're consuming more power than you're actually using in the car. So it's really inefficient. And um, number four, which is perhaps the biggest kind of black swan with electric vehicles, is that if everybody were to go and buy an electric vehicle today, so let's say you can afford it. Let's say the, the middle to upper middle class can afford an electric vehicle. They go buy an electric vehicle. They plug them in. Immediately the grid goes down. And case in point with that is California just announced that by 2035, there'll be no more gas-powered vehicles in California. You won't be able to buy one. 
uh, which is insane, but whatever. It's it's this is the new world order, folks. Don't ask, for, don't ask for it to make sense. Don't ask for it to be logically consistent. But then they made that statement, and then three days later they said, oh, oh, oh by the way, d- d- don't plug your car in between 4 p.m. and 9 p.m. <laughs> right? So the grid can't handle it. So it's a joke, and that's actually by design. If you know, if you understand the new world order, the build back better scam. It's basically, uh, you'll own nothing and be happy. And so it's all about, well, number one, reducing population. That doesn't really tie into what we're talking about here. Uh, it ties into reducing your quality of life and making sure that you don't own anything, right? The old slogan, uh, you'll own nothing and be happy. And so electric vehicles play into that because like I illustrated, they don't make sense for most people and you can't afford them. So electric vehicles in the reality of the situation is going to mean that you won't own your vehicle. You'll rent it or you will borrow it and or it'll be public transit. And so this is all just a big control, a control mechanism, but it's really all about reducing your living standard, but making you feel good about it at the same time. And so it's just a big massive virtue signal that has no real substance to it. But um, it's, uh, it's just a scam. And because if, you know, there's actually, let me, let me back up a bit and say that there's very few places in the world where electric vehicles could be scaled up in their um, availability to people. Uh, but British Columbia, the place I live, might be one of those places because we have massive hydroelectric electricity here. And hydro is great electricity as, as far as I'm concerned, if you're going to be on the grid. Uh, even if you're off grid, micro hydro is amazing. Um, and so maybe in a place like British Columbia, they could handle the scaling up of electric vehicles for the common person. But then you still have the issue of cost uh, and your context. And the fact that in winter time, electric vehicles just consume a lot more power. Um, and even if they're towing capacity, they consume almost twice as much uh, without towing. So they're just not practical for most people. That's really what this comes down to, is if you've got the context for it and you live off grid, having an electric vehicle is fantastic. For us, like I said, 90 something percent of the time, this car is powered by the sun and we have so much excess electricity that we can afford to just dump it into the car. It means that all of our you know, weekly commuting is all free. I haven't bought gas and I have a truck. I have a Toyota Tacoma and it's a nice truck, um, and it uses gasoline. But because I have fuel storage up at our place, um, I've been sitting on stored fuel, which I have, I've put fuel stabilizer into. I haven't bought gasoline in over a year. And uh, so I haven't felt the pinch of these crazy um, gas prices, but but I drive that truck very little anyways. I only really need it to, when I need a truck to do something. Otherwise, I have a little trailer I can pull behind this car. I can go pick up lumber, anything from the hardware store, call it nine times out of 10, I get what I need with just this car. And so it's free because we're off grid. But if you were to put my context into the grand scheme of things, I'm probably less than 1% of people that drive electric vehicles. And so it makes sense for me. It's kind of like uh, electric vehicles for me, horse and buggy for thee. (laughs) <laughs> it's just, it will not make sense. The context for electric vehicles will not make sense for most people. It's a complete globalist scam that's basically just about making you poor and reducing your quality of life. And one thing I'll add is the charging infrastructure for electric vehicles is nowhere, nowhere near where it would need to be to... Uh, accommodate, say, just the upper middle class of society having electric vehicles. Case in point, right now, the best electrical charging infrastructure is Tesla, hands down. Uh, nobody can compete with Tesla. The speed of charging, the availability, and the network of, uh, of their charging stations outcompetes everybody by a huge order of magnitude. And I know because I've traveled around the US charging with Tesla stations, and they're great because very few people drive electric vehicles. Um, So through 42 US states that I've traveled through, except one, every charging station I go to 
it's just a gravy train. There's barely, there's nobody there. You pull up, you charge. I'm in and out in 20 minutes or less. And it all, it's always worked well for our traveling because, you know, I, I basically I got to charge every four hours. Um, so I the, 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 at full charge, this car is uh, 460 kilometers. Uh, that's about 350 miles, maybe. And so we pull up to a charging station and, you know, we need, you gotta get out of the car, take a whiz, have a quick bite to eat, get the kids outside. And it's worked well for us. We go up, roll up to that charger and no problem. In California, where you see a lot of people driving Teslas, um, you, you, you go to some of these stations and you have to wait. You actually have to wait. And this is not convenient for people. It's just not practical to sit there and wait. Whereas gasoline, as long as it's available, <laughs> which we'll see how long that lasts. But, um, you know, gasoline, you can just get it anywhere and you're in and out in less than five minutes. But electric vehicles, you need to sit for a little bit. That doesn't make sense for a lot of people. But um, that's, the, that's the problem is when they start to scale up, it's going to be really difficult for most people to accommodate that in their lifestyle. But again, right now, because there's so few people driving electric vehicles in comparison to gas powered or diesel vehicles, it's a gravy train and the charging availability is there. But you try to get a lot more people in vehicles. Like I, I even see right now in Kelowna, which is where I'm originally from, it's where I lived for when we had this vehicle for the most part. Uh, I would go to the Tesla's charging station, which is by the Home Depot, and it always worked well. I was like, yeah, hey, I'll go plug it in while I'm shopping at Home Depot. And there was nobody there. But now I'm actually starting to see, because I still go to Kelowna from time to time, I'm actually starting to see wait times. And there is no way, there is no way that that is going to be scalable in any way for the average person. And so those are my thoughts on the matter. And uh, I'm curious what you guys think, you know, Call me out, call me a hypocrite, whatever. Um, but but uh, an electric vehicle for me has always been, and, and, and green technology in general, uh, which, you know, we're solar, we have a diesel generator, uh, and uh, we're off grid. I'll do another video on wind power sometime because it's a scam too, but but it's all, green elect, green energy, for lack of a better term, has always been about independence for me. It's not about um, anything else. You know, environmentalism for the most part is a scam. And I'm not saying don't be a good steward of the earth. We absolutely should be good stewards of the earth. Let's take care and nurture God's creation. But all this virtue signaling about uh, electric vehicles being more environmentally friendly, that's, come on, that's so easily disprovable just by looking at how lithium ion is mined and all these things. So it's... It's not about environmentalism. Let's just be honest and clear about it. Um, but uh, it's about independence. I know people go, oh, Curtis, well, your car can drive you to the gulag. And that's that's actually true. This car, the autopilot on this car is so insane now, it can literally drive up my driveway. And I've done it. The, the, the latest update of this, this car can drive up my driveway, which is a long, windy uphill with four switchbacks, one kilometer long. And uh, it's crazy. However, most other cars, most new cars, actually all new cars can drive you to the gulag, whether they're gas or electric. And so uh, electric vehicles, Tesla in particular, isn't exclusive to that. And I know some of the haters are going to be like, oh, Curtis, Elon Musk is a shell. It's like, name me a top CEO that isn't. So, you know, come on, get get over it. I think, I think a lot of people just get butthurt of the fact that, you know, hey, I've worked really hard and I can afford some nice things. But um, it is what it is, folks. I've worked my ass off for the last 10 years to be able to do what I'm doing up on my off-grid property and uh, do, do the things that I, that I want to do. And I like electric vehicles. They are very comfortable. They're quiet. They're very safe. This vehicle is the safest vehicle ever made. Uh, at least it was the last time I looked. And so, yeah, that's it in a nutshell. Leave your questions and comments below. If you guys like the video, smash the like, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel. If you haven't, see you in the next one. Check out my site from thefield.tv. It's where I post all my vlogs and the vast majority of all my content.